So the next thing we're going to look at is intercession for children. And I gave you two handouts. One thing I, d I wanted to say before we actually go into the intercession is that we need, we need to consider passages. When we consider topics and passages for kids, you, have to, you can't do the heavy theological ones. We had that little bit of a conversation yesterday <laughs> with 2 Corinthians because it was just so heavy. So, you know, we take, there's certain passages in Romans, but really Romans is a huge theological book. So it has to be, it has to be a little bit, um, I guess, easier to understand. So um, I was going through passages uh, two days ago uh, or three days ago on different passages that were great like Luke 10 25 to 37 love your neighbor as yourself and it goes into the Good Samaritan story um, stories stories are really great because they have a beginning they have introduction of the characters and then they go into this thing that happens and then there's this kind of moral at the end and those Ten, that's kind of how we work and not how kids take in information a lot. So narrative or stories are really, really important. So that's a lot of these are those. It's either parables that I picked or in the New Testament, because obviously in the Old Testament it would be stories, more stories, but um, or uh, what Jesus was doing. So another one was Luke 11, 1 through 10. Um, when one lamb is lost and the shepherd leaves all the other 99 and goes and looks for the one, the other. That's a good one. Um, Luke 12, 22 through 34, which is uh, love each other. I can't remember what I wrote, love each other. Um, Luke 15, 1 through 10 is about praying. Um, I think it's Jesus talking about praying. And and then Luke 18, 19 through 43, or Mark 10, 40 through 52 is about blind Bartimaeus. I love that story because it's, he's really persistent and um, yelling and everybody's like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> you know? And there, Jesus says, have him come to me and what do you want? And he's blind, you know, and he's like, I want to see. So it's kind of interesting. It's a really good one. Um, Zacchaeus, the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19, 1 through 10. Uh, uh, this one is a good one, Mark 4, 35 through 41, Jesus is asleep in a boat and the storm rises up and so there's a whole dynamic of what's going on in the disciples, what's, what Jesus is doing, and then uh, how it comes to, yeah, comes about. And then Mark 6, 45 through 46, Jesus went to pray by himself. I really like that because, and that might be something that you want to talk about a little bit. Because it's like, you know, Jesus prayed by himself. Do we pray by our, do we go out and pray? Do we actually do this, you know, part in our lives as well? Jesus did it. We should do it, you know. So, anyway. Um, and then things that you can do with scriptures. You, ha you can have theatrical readings where they, you read it like theater. Um, you can act it out and have the the kids act it out. Um, you can put it to song. Uh, you can draw a picture or you can have them all part of a mural so that they each do different parts of the mural. So it's kind of getting, it's a different aspect of it. And they're getting, they're, and you don't realize how much they are getting into it and what they're getting out of it doing that. So. Um, or they could do sculpture. You can give them Play-Doh and the, you know how small they are. So anyway, and then asking these questions like, who do you see? What's happening? What do you think they're feeling? This is a big one. What do you think they're feeling? How do you think they felt about that? So it's a very, it's a very <laughs> um, interpretation question. So what do you think Jesus is valuing in this? So why do you think he's doing that? What can we learn from this? And even going deeper in us, like how does that make you feel? Like what's going on inside of you? Which is very a spiritual direction thing, but I feel like it's really great because it's like you hear this, but how do you feel about it? And some people are reacting to it, and some people are like, oh, I never thought about it that way, you know? And it's actually having that dialogue as well.
Games You Can Pray. And that guy is Andy Kennedy. He's in the UK. He taught in my BTPS. And this was like awesome. I loved it. Um, okay, so just open the first page. And there's just the first part. There's like three sections. Can you read the first part for us, Noah? I heard my pastor once say, prayer works, prayer is work, prayer leads to work. His name is Edwin Gunn, and he leads the Queen Park Baptist Church in Class Club. At the outset, it may be worth asking the obvious. Isn't it frivolous to talk about prayer in the realm of play and games? Aren't you making the sacred secular? Are you not simply using a gimmick to get children praying? With all my heart, I believe this is not so. Play is God's idea, and play and games are excellent ways to learn and grow. Why can't we employ them to grow in our ability to listen to talk and to listen to listen to and talk to God? Games are often best enjoyed together, so what better way to develop unity without which our prayers stand little chance of success? Cool. What stood out to you when you read that? I think yeah, the the, the, the question of is it like just a joke then? I think is fair, um, and just like the response, like no, we're getting them involved, we're getting them active, and mm-hmm. engaging, and get them into the thought of prayer. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm even thinking like the adult implications of like, why don't we make it more fun so that people mm-hmm. who are still getting it, who are first getting into it, right? Get into Absolutely, it. right. So we're not making it trivial; we're making it personal. Yes, so. right. So yes, he he really opened my box with prayer. I mean, this is like 2001, so this is a long time ago. So, but I think it's great. And I think this is, in our teachings, we can use this, we can utilize this with all age groups. Obviously, some things are, the ones that he gives are very good for any age, I think. So, yeah. Um, Let's look at page number two. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to tell you about page two and three. It's basically talking about the steps of intercession and why, kind of he's he's using it, he's teaching people who are not in YWAM about them, that they are part of our DNA and they're really important. And he goes through an explanation on each part. And so those are good things if you are teaching kids, like, to do the steps of intercession. I think it's a really good... um, resource for you, okay? Especially the older kids. Yeah. Little kids too, like I don't, I think you can do this for the littlest kids too. Um, all right, in page four, then page four through six, our base, yeah, the very end has the introduction in the title page, so don't worry about that, but let's look at page four and just look at some of the things and i'm not going to have us read all of them but i it's great because if we read through them we kind of get ideas and you can take these and you know do your own thing so okay so let's look at number three and number four i'm just going to jump jump to those doors windows and walls can you read the children to go and stand in twos or threes in open doorways in your house or building, and for two minutes pray for God to open up doors and windows of opportunities for the gospel to spread. Again, focus into which nation you are asking God to do this. Stand by walls and pray against barriers to the gospel, or pray for strength to be given to believers in difficult places. So super simple, super simple, but you're getting them up and moving, and you're getting them engaged in prayer. Awesome. Read the next one, cardboard. cardboard. Build as big a cardboard city as possible. Think big. <laughs> Make it out of boxes or whatever you can find and pray for homeless people. Get the children or youth to crawl inside and live there for a while and draw prayers and write poems, etc. Stick them everywhere. If you don't have cardboard, then use blankets or sheets. Cool. Sheet. Sheets. I think they probably has a typo. So that's kind of fun. That's a great idea. That's awesome. Totally. It reminds me of one that we did when I was at King's Lodge and we had prayer. And I think it was for um, people who were like in a rough situation of like homeless and so on. 
and we had somebody brought in bricks and had this big wall and we and I think we wrote down on one side what were the things that were causing the wall to be there and and praying against those things that would cause a wall for them to accept the gospel and then once we prayed that down, like we started, we wrote on it, and then we pulled it down and praying against it. Then we built a wall of protection, but putting in, like, holiness or righteousness or whatever. It was like we built up this other protection for them. It was really cool. I still remember it today. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, okay, page five. Intercession drama. Act out intercession drama. Stand deep in the gap. Act out what prayer and intercession is. Stand, stand God on a chair and ask three people represent the city, person, or nation. Ask people to represent Christians who stand in between God and the place. But have one place not represented at all. Have someone play Satan who tries to the believers off from their brain. The Christians use their authority to make Satan flee. He then notices that no one is standing in the gap for that city or person over there. He turns his attention on it and no one is there to intervene. Help people see their responsibility to the people who stand in the gap. Cool. Okay, so, you know, it's a different way to get them involved. It's kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's all kinesthetic. So, yeah. There's so many ways you can do that, but that's, I thought it was a great idea. Let's move on to page six, number eight. Would you look at that, Noah? Yeah. Group shapes. Divide into groups of six or seven. The leader calls out a shape that the group then needs to form. I'm assuming I'm supposed to say form. Mm -hmm. in their bodies. Example, church. The leader then asks the group to pray for the church. The leader may suggest what to pray for more specifically, pastors, leaders, unity, etc. Other ideas of shapes and related prayer topics. An umbrella, for God to send the reign of the Spirit to us, the city, etc. A throne, make Jesus Lord of your life again. A family, protect for, pray for protection on the family, marriages. A machine, pray for people to have jobs, be able to earn money, for justice in the workplace, for Christians and business to be blessed and protected. A fruit, ask God to grow the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. A net, pray for the unreached and lost in your city, nation, school, pray for friends by name. A heart, pray for the love of God to be experienced or for God's people to have clean hearts. 1040 window, this is a missions term in denoting an area of the world least evangelized and reached. It's rectangular shaped 10 degrees and 40 degrees. Latitude above the equator and stretching from West Africa to East of Japan. Human pyramid, pyramid, three levels, three on bottom, two in the middle, and one on top. Uses to pray for unity and body of Christ and supporting each other. So he basically gave you a whole bunch of ideas. This is also really great with object lessons. I mean, you can bring objects in to use for prayer as well. So, I mean, you can use it, the object lesson for what you're doing and teaching, but then you can move it into pr use it with prayer as well. So. Yay! <laughs> ideas, ideas. Are you getting ideas? Yeah. And know your audience. Yeah. What's appropriate? Yeah. So, and it's, this is like, I'm going to be all things to all men so that I may win some. Yeah. You are showing them more of who Jesus is. Yeah. So how you honor and serve them makes a difference. Okay? So it's like, Okay, God, they just, they have this part of you that's great, but they don't know this part. And so you're just the bridge. So, good. Um, there's another one, sardines. Do you guys know this? Can you read sardines? Can you read it? The name of this activity comes from the small fish that he has back, packed tightly together in tin. An old UK favorite where a few people are sent off to hide anywhere <coughs> they want to. The rest then have to go find them, and when they do join them in their secret hideaway, it gets more and more crowded. As more people discover them, idea idea is to remain as un undercover as possible. This is good. This is good game. This is this is a good game in which to pray for the persecution.
Christian church in many nations and underground church in China. The initial people who go off to high take a nation or situation to pray for, and the rest need to find the one that matches their paper. It all, if all the pieces of the paper arrive, then that team gets a special reward. Mm. Think of it as a smuggling Bible, etc. Mm. Cool. So, you guys play sardines? Did you? Yeah. yeah, I loved sardines. It was really fun. So this is just a take on sardines, which I thought, well, that's creative. <laughs> you know? So, anyway, I think that, w- that gives you an idea. I didn't have read all of them because I think you can do that, but I felt like some of the most in- more interesting ones that you can actually morph to what you're doing, you can do. So, so would this be like a whole time event? Because I guess I just don't know how to. It depends. It's a prayer. Yeah, it would be a prayer. Like there's some of the ones at the beginning, like the object lesson you could do for a short period of time. But no, yeah, like sardines, you've got to have a lot more time to do it. Okay. So yes, definitely. It's, if you're having a prayer meeting with a group of kids, then, you know, if you have 15 minutes, I think you've, that's br- pretty good for a lot of them. Sardines, no. So you need more time. So if you're on a children's camp, perfect. That's a great place to do it in a children's camp because then you have a lot more spaces of time to do things like that. Every day you want to do some prayer, so, yeah. All right, so I feel like intercession and prayer is actually important to bring in um, when you're teaching kids uh, because it's that, one, that connection with God and partnering with Him to see the world affected. Um, so I think that's actually really important, and I do want, you know, I didn't, We didn't really say that in the intercession, or sorry, for our assignment this week, but if you can bring that in, please do. Okay? So, 